Well, welcome to the Post Sunday app. Thanks for joining us for this short video. Uh, well, it might not be so short today. I know, I was <laughs> a little worried when you said that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we were in Genesis 15 yesterday. We were. Uh, talking about uh, the covenant that God made with, with Abram at the time, mm -hmm. later to be Abraham. And uh, we got some, some uh, deep questions here. Deep and very expected. So, I, I knew this yeah. question was coming, and I, in retrospect, I, you know, as I was planning the sermon, I was like, you know what, I can't get to all this in the sermon, so I'll, I'll address this another time. Mm -hmm. I wish I had maybe taken some things out and put this in, yeah. but um, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. This could have been a sermon series if you yeah. would have allowed, <laughs> yeah. allowed that. Um, but a lot of the questions, one of the first questions had to do with, um, uh, so the, the animals were split and put on each side, and God was a smoking pot and a, um, the torch. a torch that went, went through, uh, representing his presence. Um, so there, in a covenant, there's, there's two sides. So some of the questions were, well, what are those two sides? Yeah. Um, isn't God the one doing all of it? And then secondarily, um, you brought up the idea there, that there being a blood payment involved in that, and it represent and talking about Christ right. there. So. Uh, there's a question in there somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> Just go, I guess. Okay, so you and I were talking about this earlier, and we yeah. talked about okay, the first part of the chapter deals with the child that's been promised to Abraham, and then the second part deals with the land, and we see that God mm -hmm. takes the responsibility on himself to fulfill this covenant. And so the, the question that was kind of there was, okay, so far, and, and I thought this was a really good point, you, you said, well, so far, there's no requirement on Abraham. Mm -hmm. So what penalty would God be taking on himself? Because God in chapter 12 says, go, I, I'm going to give you this land. Chapter 15, he says, do this. I'm going to give you this land. So it doesn't seem like there's any condition on it. And I, I think kind of the, um, the similarity, obviously, is with, with our salvation. Mm -hmm. God promises us salvation unconditionally, as we talked about yesterday, faith alone. So mm -hmm. we know place our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive eternal life. Mm -hmm. And yet, we know that there are requirements uh, that God places upon believers. And you look at the book of Revelation, and who is it that obtains eternal life? It's the overcomer. It's the overcomer. It's the person who perseveres in their faith. Mm -hmm. So how can God promise us, promise us salvation uh, bef before glorification? And the, the answer is because he's a sovereign God who's going to accomplish the, the means uh, by which we yeah. receive eternal life. And so we receive the righteousness of Christ, uh, salvation, and he perseveres us and allows us to be overcomers. And I think the same is true here in Genesis 15. God is saying, I'm promising this to you. And uh, at the very end, when he says to your, to your offspring, I give you this land, and then he pa God himself passes between the pieces. He's saying, and the requirements that I'm going to place upon your people to live in this land, and you think the book of Deuteronomy and the curses and the blessing, um, Whenever they disobey and deserve the cursing, they deserve to be uh, um, obliterated as a people, I'm going to ultimately take upon myself the penalty for covenant failure. Yeah. And that's, that's him uh, in that blood covenant being willing to take on the penalty in himself. Okay. Okay. That was the best explanation. That well, was, we practiced. That was, that was really good. We kind of we we'd kind of practiced beforehand. So well, we, we had a great discussion yeah. before this, but yeah, I think that's we, that's uh, that's really good. It would have it would have gone a lot longer if it was our <laughs> earlier conversation because we were struggling. Yeah. Well, what about uh, tie in James two here? Whew. Okay. Faith, faith without works is dead. Yeah, we should have. We didn't practice this one. <laughs> Cut. Um, okay, so uh, we we talked about Paul's usage of. Genesis 15, 6, where he, in yeah. Galatians and in Romans, he talks about um, Abraham was, was justified by faith, and um, God credited his, his faith as righteousness. Well, James mentions, mentions Genesis 15, 6, and on the surface, if you are just reading, not looking very carefully, or even looking carefully, because it's, it's, a, it's, a um, it's a real sticky issue to, to make sure you read carefully. It looks like James and Paul disagree. Mm. And both of them look back to Genesis 15, quote it, and they seem to come to different conclusions. Mm. You see Paul say that um, we see that we're justified by faith apart from works. And then you come to James 2, and uh, James, as he's talking about this passage, uh, says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up mm -hmm. Isaac on the altar? And then he, verse 23 says, the scripture was fulfilled that says, 
Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now, you say, um, and then he says, and you see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. So we talked about Romans 6 and Galatians, and, or uh, we talked about Romans and Galatians and uh, Genesis 15 yesterday. L- let's talk a little bit about James. Okay. What's happening here is um, James is talking about the effectiveness of faith. How can we be sure that someone has a living faith? What are the practical outworkings of, of faith? And the word justification can be used in, in several ways. And I think the easiest way to describe it is in Paul, Paul is talking about justification before God. How can God declare a person righteous? And the word justification there means to, um, to acquit of wrongdoing, to uh, credit to someone something as, as righteous. Here, the word justification in James means proof of righteousness. So it's one, it's acquittal for righteousness. Here, it's proof of righteousness. How can other people um, see that you have righteousness? Mm -hmm. So uh, James is saying, what good is it if a person says they have faith but doesn't have works? Can that faith save them? In other words, is that a legitimate, true faith? And Paul has uh, the same question. You know, in Romans 6, he's going to talk about our new relationship with God and, and works uh, through faith. Ephesians 2.10, same thing. But anyway, um, he, uh, James uses that phrase that you and I kind of joke around with each other sometimes where he says, uh, what good is it if a brother or sister is poorly clothed, lacking in daily food, and one of you says, go in peace, be warmed and filled? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what good is that? Faith by itself, if it does not have works, it's, it's dead. It's not true faith. And then he says, um, don't Do you want to be shown, this is uh, James 2.20, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? And again, I I think James is using that term justified to to say uh, prove. Wasn't our Abraham's faith proven by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? Now, by the way, uh, Genesis 15 is a passage we looked at yesterday. It talks about being justified by faith. Um, We haven't gotten to... Abraham sacrificing his son Isaac. Right. So the justification that Paul is talking about takes place before the works that James are, is talking about. Mm-hmm. He says, um, you see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works and the scripture was fulfilled. So back here in Genesis 15, the scripture was, there was this prophecy given. It says, Abraham believed God and it was counted him to, to him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God. So even James is acknowledging, hey, back here, this is whenever this type of righteousness was given to Abraham, and now the fruit of that was displayed through his works. Now, if, if Abraham wasn't willing to do these things, if, if faith just kind of had no works, and we come to here and we see no works in Abraham's life, James is saying, look, you go back and you see this wasn't real faith, and mm-hmm. so he wasn't. So justification here, James is making the point that Paul would agree with that a faith that doesn't do anything isn't, isn't true faith. Mm-hmm. But... We're declared righteous by our faith alone. Hmm. Okay, that was a little bit of a longer. No, it was very good. Yeah, very, very good. So what, the words you used there was uh, well, the distinction between Romans and James was proving in James, right, right, and justification. Yeah, Romans. yeah. Justification is, is used both places, but justification in terms of uh, um, acquittal or uh, being declared. declared There's a declared righteous here. There's a mm-hmm. proof of righteousness here. Yeah, um, that's good. I talked to my friend Jason Alliga today about this passage, and he said. I think I said this already, but he said just a real simple explanation that he uses with people is this is before God, God declaring your righteousness. Righteous James is talking about before man. How do, mm-hmm. how do people know that you've received righteousness from God? Yeah. It's already there, but they see it proven by your works. Yeah. And that's, you know, someone else approached me after church and said, hey, you're not saying that we don't need to work, right? Your works are important. They just come from faith, right? I said, Absolutely. He said good. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. You know. yeah. Well, that's very clear. Now, uh, I have left your office a few times, and you've said to me, be warmed and filled. Yes, I have. So what does that say about your... Uh, <laughs> it means I need to be careful with my words, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I do use that. I, Rich Burkle, actually, was, right. the, was the guy who used that with me originally. And it, it yeah. is kind of a, a reminder. I need to not just be... I use it. I use it in jest to kind of remind myself I don't need to just be flippant whenever people come to my office with needs. Hey, be warmed and filled. Yeah. Go sure. ask. Go ask Mike. Go ask Kent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to, to really um, yeah. make, make my faith be producing things, yeah. or make sure my faith, by God's grace, is producing things. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So. 
Well, good job, man. You covered a lot of territory <laughs> in that time there. Thanks, Ben. And, uh, yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in to the Post Sunday app. Hope you have a great rest of your day.